This is iPhone 14 Pro Max. The only difference compared with the previous Pro is the dynamic island. And it has a tiny space separate from the edge of the phone, which is just big enough to let people know that it's a new iPhone. But what is the use of it? Showing you the current state like unlock the screen, airports connected, and a screen cap, or face payment. It also can be shortcut of the apps like music, navigation, video, phone call, or even music with a navigation, navigation with timer, timer with a video playing. And we believe more apps will step on the dynamic island as the adaptation goes on. But when things are seemingly forgotten, it's not an easy thing to tap on it. On the previous iPhone, I could easily bring down the control and the notification center with a simple slide. But when it comes to iPhone 14 Pro, they're still coming down, except Dynamic Island. As we know, the purpose of a Dynamic Island is not to convenience us, but beautify the home. So I would like not to bother myself to tap on it. This even keeps my front camera clean and it doesn't inconvenience me at all. And of course I don't expect the iPod will update some double or extended island because that would be so speechless. Anyway, I think it's gonna be fine with me if it just stays there as it should be. But when you're trying to pull out the notification, you can't just slide from the notch by the old way because it's blocked by the island. You can only start from the edge or from the left side. It is really a bathroom work to do. It feels quite similar with touch bar. It becomes very clumsy after you added a function which is not really useful. Honestly, it's like pulling, mm, pulling, pulling a stubborn donkey. Despite the nice work from the beautification group, it is still there and bothers you. I think the always on display is a way better new function than Dynamic Island. Cooperating with the iOS 16 lock screen, I can be aware of the states all the time without tapping it. It only requires a glance to unlock it, whatever the position is. With it, just forget about lifting your wrist. But is it killing the battery? With the always on display on, starting from finished charging and then uh, mostly video playing, chatting, payment, standby and browser till it reaches the last percent of the battery in the evening, it is 16 hours and 32 minutes. Frequently shooting videos of photo on outdoors, battery bank access very early for the other phone, but this still stands in total 8 hours and 43 minutes. As my life schedule, the battery is more than enough. Of course, the display not just always on, because it will adjust its brightness based on the environment. It shuts down when it's in the pocket, and it will take a nap when you were sleeping. How about gaming? For that, we need to be merciless. Let's put the highest 60 frames on Mihayo. Battery dies very consistently, roughly 10% every half hour. If you put the charger on, it survives 4 to 5 hours. It has acceptable thermodynamic control, well, it can no longer warm your hands. It's not running smoothly sometimes, mostly when it's running into a new scene, but it gets better if you run the map a little more. For the beginner just like me, it is not really possible to keep playing for 4 or 5 hours. When the battery runs out, you put a charger on. It only takes half hour to fit 50% with the 70 watt. The next 50% takes more than an hour if we turn off the battery optimization. Fortunately, I won't continuously use more than 10 hours without charging. Here we count the 48 megapixels. It causes each photo contains the size of 50 to 70 megabyte. The other camera are 12 megapixels, which will be the size of 20 to 30 megabyte. Think about storage carefully. You'll find that the Pro Row from 14 Pro Max keeps more dark detail but not the highlights when you're using the professional apps. Here's what you need to remember. Rather less than overexpose. If it appears completely black when you turn on the Pro Row in Photoshop, don't worry, probably just choose the wrong profile. It will turn to the same with the iPhone after you correct it. Rather than Pro Row, study the structure and exposure before you take picture. I would normally turn it off. There's an obvious difference on the original photo from 14 Pro Max. 
It has some progress of HDR and a backlight condition. Person SIM divided photo results from 13 has been reduced on 14 Pro. The 2x camera, you would thought it's an individual camera if you didn't know it is using the 12 megapixels for the primary commerce camera in the first place. The colors are very consistent from 0.5x to 3x camera. This sort of photo that you won't think it is characteristic, but instantly colorized if you did a small adjustment. Fine for daily recording, it'll be very entertaining if you just want to shoot some photos and edit. Switch to the front camera. Autofocus is accessible for the selfie and resulting a transformation just like the same with the rear camera. If you observe the photo carefully, you will immediately see the optimization and it won't affect the shooting process in the system. But this process makes me feel that the Tim Cook is helping me in the distance. At last, the feeling when you're taking the picture and the color of the original photo does remind me the Xiaomi 12S Ultra that I used before. But if we're talking about the filming, it is still the stage of iPhone. Speaking about parameters, color, graphic, and stabilization alone, there are many different rivals, but not as one. The video shooting remains the same with the previous iPhone, convenience is highlighted. Very stable and smooth 4K 60 frames daily shooting. Action mode is added. It crops graphic to 2.8K and it requires enough brightness. And then you will get an extremely stable video like this. You will lose some graphic quality in order to avoid a vibration. By shooting a video like this, I don't need the stabilizer and the latest stabilization. Still very convenient. This is a good function for the video maker who only use the mobile phone. After all, the impression is the first priority and the graphic comes after. The last one I liked was time-lapse photography. I didn't know that I needed it. But I was impressed by the time-passing photograph, seducing me to learn more about the time-lapse photography. Through the upgrades of the software and hardware, it delivers better graphic and stabilization for the time-lapse photography. Moving time-lapse with auto-optimization allows to share the video instantly. So even it has a conflict between the big light, contrast, and HDR, which causes the sky flashing when you're shooting it by action mode. I still think it will be improved by updating the algorithm. Besides, many of the functions on iPhone is like that, slowly gets better. Except Signal. Many other functions are getting better indeed, especially when you put in the Apple ecosystem. Like AirDrop between Apple devices, page relay, phone call, messages, even taking picture by using iPhone on Mac. These functions are often mentioned in our channel. You can now even use iPhone as a camera of Mac to produce a front view and a vertical view. If you have another iPhone and a pair of AirPods, the AirPods will switch to the other phone when you're starting playing music. You can also save your musical card system by using the CarPlay for an iPhone. iPhone is even the only one which can film, edit, and replay the Dolby Vision. And it has a spectacular accessibility experience. But why are we still feeling bored on iPhone? Well, because normally it has a long updating period. The functions I like will be on early iPhone as the system upgrading. Unless it's not supported by the hardware, such like Torture Day to Face ID. Otherwise, the function will be likely the same on the close generations. It's quite good to the old versions, but for the new one, it's hard to put away a big gap with the old ones. Even so, it's fine, but they are intending to promote the Dynamic Island, 
Looking back to the early interviews of Stephen Jobs. The company's not any more successful, so the people that can make the company more successful are sales and marketing people, and they end up running the companies. And the product people get driven out of the decision-making forums, and the companies forget what it means to make great products. Isn't this talking about the Apple today? Leave alone the concept of marketing, I think there are only two purposes of a dynamic island. First, telling people there's a hole, and then presenting how beautiful the Apple UI designer fixed it. Why not just fix the problem rather than beautify it? In these days with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, there are some problems shows up. Consider notification with crosswise unless you slide it. Unable to unlock the screen when the always on display gets stuck. Apps are suddenly dead sometimes, as well as choosing the moment from live photo. Listen to video when it's running in the background. It will be shut down when it's only one there. Stuck again when you're taking photos by WeChat, and this speech this pendulum. <laughs> Sorry, I just can't stop laughing, just too ridiculous. Although these problems are not appearing very frequently, but it still makes me doubt, is this thing still the Apple that I'm familiar and trust with? Frequency reduction still there on 14 Pro Max, not many upgrades on the dynamic mode compared with the last version. Even the Final Cut Pro was not adopted when it was added in the dynamic mode video. And you are even still recommended to airdrop your video since the graphic is already upgraded to 4K. It works well on smaller files, but it will be extremely slow of dozens of larger ones to transfer. You may use cable to transfer, but I won't expect how fast that light import will be. The next, the iOS 16. Picture text recognition, live photo, image mating is pretty good on it, but they are not cooperating well on the same photo. When I want to play, image made it. Try it again, text recognized. Not particle to turn it off because you still need it. Change the gesture may be a solution. And you'll never know how many notifications are hidden underneath if you don't slide it up. It just doesn't make sense. I wasn't early when I first encountered with the iPo, and the apps on Android at the same time was terrible. I purchased my first iPhone through the recommendation of my friend. Uh, Five C. I was chatting, reading, listening, studying. Never knew that switch apps could be so smooth, and the fortune makes me always faster than the others. I also tried a jailbreak, knowing the problems and cons of a closed system, and I can't forget how beautiful the arranged hardware inside the phone after I opened it for the first time. The lighting cable was so advanced because you don't waste time to pick the right side. It just keeps delighting me from in and out. After that, I just can't help to recommend iPhone by its photo, filming, stabilization, ecosystem, payment grade fingerprint, and so on. The iPhone 14 Pro Max today is absolutely a good one among the flagships. It is easy for it to deal with the daily use and even all kinds of hash tests, but still, lack of creativity. Using a dynamic island and even assuming it as a new creation, then put it on the first page. Perhaps they are just pretty confident. Anyway, Apple has demonstrated us how a hunter becomes a prey. Is it worth to buy? Well, for the Apple fans, they don't need a reason to purchase. But for the regular user just like me in the Apple ecosystem, it's not necessary to upgrade every time. If you have an iPhone 11 or even older ones, you will feel obvious upgrades if you change to the iPhone 14 Pro series. Promotion screen, tom quality, battery endurance, camera, these upgrades are easily spotted. If you just want a new phone without considering the ecosystem, only transferring files through WeChat, a camera which produces clear image, showing no interest on iPad, Mac, watch, AirPods, in that case, a cheaper Android flagship device would be a nice choice as well. 
As for the 14 Pro Max, it is still a good device to purchase, but no surprise at all. 6.75 is the composite score that we give to iPhone 14 Pro Max. Test away. Bonnie try before you buy.